You guys ready for a good day? Yeah? Um, isn't it good when you just wake, out of, uh, wake up out of bed and the sun's shining? Yeah? And you like, no, today's the day that the Springboks have it. Right? Isn't it like just, do you guys feel that as well? No? Okay. It's probably only a few of us here today. Hey, if it's your first time at Gracegate today, um, my name's Wesley, and um, we're a community, we're a church here that is passionate about Jesus and what He is doing in our lives. And um, we're all, um, we have some sayings that we say here often is that there's no perfect people allowed. So if you aren't really any, you know, you're not religious at all, um, that's okay. None of us are as well. And um, we built this place actually for people who are curious about faith. Um, if you have questions about faith, if you, you're not 100% sure who Jesus is and what the whole big deal is about Christianity, um, you are in the safest environment. So just, yeah, feel at peace today. We're so glad that you could join us here. And um, can I just quickly see who is actually shouting for the All Blacks tonight? Yeah? Okay, there's only a few. Springboks? Yeah, okay. All right. It's the way we roll. We're humble until after the game. Um, but yeah, I'm um, today also celebrating my five-month anniversary to my Kiwi wife. Um, so we'll see how that goes after tonight's game. All right. And yeah, if I need help, um, I might give you guys a call. But either way, I don't mind what actually happens tonight. Because after the game, um, tomorrow morning, I'm actually heading off to South Africa with um, Zalia. So we're really excited about that. So either way, it doesn't matter what the score is. Um, yeah, we'll be going back to South Africa for a couple of weeks. So really excited about that. But um, if you've joined us and you've never been to Grayscale as well, um, you would have obviously noticed that we've... I don't know why they did the decor all green. But yeah, anyway. But um, we've got this green man. And we are passionate about this green man. It's all, almost like our motto. And today, you've almost joined us on a day that's pretty much very in-house, um, where we just kind of remind each other what this green man is all about and what we are as a community. So um, I'm just going to share with you guys for a couple minutes um, about our church and, and where we sort of gain all our thoughts from. And then um, we're going to have an awesome celebration of listening to Nate's story and, um, yeah, going public about his faith. So that's going to be cool. All right. So before we start, can we just, yeah, say a prayer? God said, hey, um, whether we believe in you or not, um, we're here with curious minds. And we just pray that um, you can just reveal a clear picture of who you are and what church and community is all about. So um, just speak to us today is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. So I don't know how long Gracegate has been around for. Um, I think, is it about 10, 12, 13 years? Somewhere around there, maybe longer. Um, but this church is honestly, um, it's my heart, it's my passion, and this community is my heart and my passion. And it streams all the way back um, about 2,000 years ago. Um, to where this guy called Jesus actually started this whole movement. And um, Jesus was, um, God actually said, hey, I'm sending my son to this earth um, to come and try and bring restoration um, to humanity. And one of the first things that Jesus did when he started his ministry was he started getting um, disciples and followers. And um, this crazy story goes that he never ever chose the most skilled people or the guys who had it all together, but he actually just looked for people who were willing, and he said to them, hey, um, I want to make you fishers of men. I want to actually give your life more purpose than yourself. And um, a lot of these guys started leaving their whole careers and started following Jesus step by step. And there were 12 guys who were really close to him. This was like his inner group. And um, they journeyed for about three and a half years where Jesus would minister and he would go and not make a point, but he would go and make a difference. He would go into um, different communities and actually go and actually help people where people had needs. He'd go and um, try and meet those needs. And um, often, like most of the time, if you read the New Testament, 
um, you'll see that Jesus often got in trouble by the church or the religious leaders at the time because he was doing everything upside down. And it was countercultural. It was everything that everyone had sort of grown up believing. Um, he was doing something different. And this, this whole church, this whole movement was formed. And it especially kicked off um, after his ministry. And as believers or Christians, we believe that Jesus actually died. Um, he, he, he stayed in the grave for a few days, and then he rose from the dead. And um, that to us alone is like really miraculous. So if we say, if someone can predict their own death, um, and then if they can pull it off, then we're just going to go with whatever that person says. So that's basically why some of us follow Jesus step by step. And after his resurrection, he sort of actually said to everyone, his close disciples, his followers, he said, hey, I'm actually leaving, and um, I'm actually giving you guys the commission or, or, or the challenge, and I want you guys to go and make a difference in the world. I want you guys to be the voice of who I am. And so Jesus disappears off the scene. He promises um, a presence that the Holy Spirit will actually be with um, his people as they navigate life and as they go and try and um, make a difference in the world. And so these guys go, and um, they're also timid. They're not trained they unskilled people, but just empowered by the Holy Spirit. They go um, not to make a point, but actually to make a difference in the world. And as they do that, this movement starts to grow more and more and more. And people start believing, trusting in that Jesus actually died and rose from the dead. And these guys were eyewitnesses 2,000 years ago of something that actually happened. They saw it with their own eyes, and all that they did was they went around and they shared this with other people, and they started to believe, and they started to follow. And this was the time when um, the, the Jews and the Gentiles were sort of also starting to believe and um, to come to faith, and they had so many questions because the Jews were always believing that, hey, the coming Messiah would come, and is it Jesus? Isn't it Jesus? And the Gentiles who didn't believe in Jesus were starting to believe in Jesus. And then they were saying, hey, do I actually have to take on all the Jewish traditions as well? So there was a lot of complexity at that time as well. But this movement gained, um, how can I say, it just gained momentum and continued to go on and go on and go on. And um, over time, over years, this movement has messed up often. Um, often, like the church has actually got things wrong so many times. And um, a lot of people have been hurt by actually what the church has done over the years. And you can read through history and you can see some shocking stuff that was under the name of Christianity that was actually done. Um, but there comes a time where also you can see that the church has actually made such a significant difference in this world over the years. And today, now, we stand in a space where we're just continuing that movement. So we're, I put this slide up, um, that the church is a movement, all right? Maybe you are under the impression or that a ch the church is a place. I mean, and that's the terminology we use when we speak about church. We say, hey, I'm going to church, or that church is actually a building. But it was never intended to be a building. It was actually always a movement. It was a movement about people who actually believed in someone and said, hey, we want to actually follow this person step by step and make a difference in people's lives. So yeah, we are. Grayscate, um, if you've been around here for a while, you know what we're about. But if you haven't, um, we've got three core values that we are so passionate about and that we hold on to because we believe that is sort of the life that Jesus lived. And one of them is this, this value of belonging. We have a strong sense of belonging that the church in this movement was actually for everyone. It's for everyone. No perfect people are allowed. And it didn't matter um, what you have done or what you haven't done. Um, it doesn't discriminate against, um, you know, if you're South African or um, an all black, whatever. It doesn't discriminate, but actually you belong. And yeah, at Gracegate, we want to keep that on, and, and we, we are really intentional about saying, hey, you're welcome. Everybody's invited. Um, you don't have to believe to belong in this space. And so that's something we echo over and over and over again, and it's in our culture. It's in our DNA, 
And I think that's sort of the whole movement of Christianity that everyone's welcome. So that's one of the, our core values in this movement. And the other one is we have this value of discovering that um, we have this humility that actually we don't know everything about God. And um, we wish we did, but we don't. We're actually all on a journey. We're all trying to discover more about God and who he is and who we are and how they sort of, um, you know, fit together. And uh, one of the, the core things that we do is we use the, the, the Bible um, to try and gain information and understanding of who God is. But more than that, we have this open-handed approach to actually, hey, we can learn from each other. Um, and that's why this community is so beautiful. That's why this, this movement is so beautiful. And then the last um, core value that we, we have here at Grayscale is this value of engaging. And that's sort of where I want, what I want to be speaking about today is that actually we, we don't just want to be bystanders and we don't just want to watch and, and see what is happening in this community, but actually we want to engage in the game. And we want to be participants. We want to actually go and make a difference. If this movement is to continue, we want to actually continue it. And that's where this green man comes from, is that it is our, it is our hope and it is our desire that we will continue to move towards people who are in need. And we can just say hi. We can just connect with people. We can just see how we can help. Because that's what we, we saw Jesus doing as he initiated this movement. So that's a brief understanding of who we are. And the Bible text that I want to use today to just try and hit home what, what this was all about is a guy who planted, sort of, who started, who initiated um, the most sort of church groups or the most movements um, when this all started. And his name was Paul. And if you haven't um, read up or know anything about Paul, Paul was an unbeliever. Um, he didn't believe anything about Jesus until actually he had this encounter with Jesus. He turned his life completely around from actually persecuting Christians, hating Christians, hating people who were actually following this movement, to becoming a passionate leader of this movement. And um, Paul actually goes around and um, he starts forming different churches and, and echoing what he had heard from eyewitnesses about who Jesus was and what he was all about. And then he gets to this place in Corinth, and um, there was a church that was planted there. And he shares this passage, and if you've been in church for a while, you've probably heard this passage. If you haven't, I'm going to echo it today. He gives this metaphor of what this movement is actually all supposed to look like. He gives this metaphor of what church is all about. And um, I'm just going to share it with you guys today. So he says this. He says, now, it's, it's found in 1 Corinthians 12. And um, I've just um, used different verses in that. But if you want, you can go and read it um, sometime. But he starts off and he says, now, you are the body of Christ. He says, now, you are the body of Christ. He's, he's, he's come to Corinth. A lot of um, believers had now started to follow um, this new way, this Jesus movement, and he says, hey, you guys are the body. You guys are the movement of who Jesus is. And he goes on then, and he says, and each one of you is a part of it. Each one is essential to be part of this body of Christ. And, and, and what he was actually echoing here yeah, is he was saying, hey, you have heard about who Jesus was and what he has done. And, um, but Jesus wasn't around anymore at this time. And now he was saying, hey, I just want you guys to know that you are the body. You are the movement. You are the representation of who Jesus is. And each one of you are a part. And then he says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form what? Form one body, so it is with Christ. He's saying, hey, like, guys, understand this, that, that every single one of you is part of this movement, all right? He says that, hey, all of it actually forms one body, and so this is exactly how it is with Christ. This is exactly how it is with Jesus. He says, for we are all baptized 
by one spirit. And when, he, when, he's, when he's teaching this, when Paul's actually um, sharing this with the people in Corinth, this isn't necessarily probably the baptism that we're going to experience today. But he's trying to say that you guys are all under, um, you're like immersed in this new movement. You're, you're all under the covering of actually the Holy Spirit, this, this movement. You're all on the same team. And he says, so as to form one body. And I love this part, and often we miss this part here. But he says, whether Jews or Gentiles. And if you understand the context and the time that Paul is actually sharing this, um, the best possible way I could think about describing this today, all right, would be imagine Karen Reed playing for the Springboks tonight. Can you imagine that? It wouldn't happen, right? It wouldn't happen. At the same time, when Paul is echoing this, all right, this this is like new information for all these people trying to understand, trying to to grasp what this movement, what the church is all about. Paul's saying, hey, whether you're Jews or Gentiles, you're, you're all on the same team. You're all one body, which the Jews would say, no, no. No, maybe the Gentiles can, can believe and, and join us because we got all our, all our traditions and culture and, um, you know, covenants that we hold on to. But, I mean, there's no way that we can be part of, of the Gentiles. Paul's echoing, yeah, there's only one body. All of you fall under this one body. And then he says slave or free. And in that context, when they had slaves, they, they would have thought that's ridiculous. Like, I mean, I don't even look at my slave in the eyes, Paul. What are you saying to me that that you're saying that that we're almost on the same, like, level? That's what Paul was echoing here. He's saying, hey, I want you to understand what the movement, what the body of Christ is all about. And he's saying, hey, we're actually all on the same playing field. We're all on the same team. And he goes on and he says, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And basically what he's trying to say here is this, that it's not about one of us, but it's about all of us. It's not about one of us, it's about all of us. You see, this movement here, this church, this community, other churches, we understand that that it's not about one person, but it's about all of us coming together, following Jesus and understanding that, hey, this is actually a movement and it's not a building. It's something we actually have to actively pursue and do. Paul goes on and he says, now if the foot should say, I mean, and this is kind of crazy because like a foot can't speak, right? He's saying, hey, if the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. Paul's like, guys, this is how plain I'm trying to make it. This is how simple I'm trying to make it. That you understand that like naturally a living body can't function without all its body parts. All right. He says, yeah, or it can, but it can't like get the maximum potential without all its body parts. He's saying like, hey, if the foot just says, hey, I don't want to, you know, I'm not the hand, so, so actually I don't think I'm, I'm part of the body. He says, like, that, that can't happen. It's impossible. He goes on and he echoes this. He says, and if the ear should say, all right, I don't know who's going to be listening then, but if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. Does this make sense? He's breaking it down really simple. And in the best way that I could possibly help you guys understand this is I got this this week. And I thought, wow, what a great illustration, all right? <laughs> um, but he has a hand, all right? Paul is saying, hey, if the hand says, hey, like, I don't want to be part of the, or, or I'm not the eye, all right? How can it actually not be part of the body anymore, right? What does it do? Do do we just chuck it away? And then like, okay, it's not part of the body. body. Like the hand has no function then, right? What is is that hand valuable for now? Nothing, right? Probably nothing, 
Right, he goes on. He, he says this. He says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. And if you've ever had something stuck in your eye, or if you have contacts, or if you wear glasses, you know that actually, what do you need? You need your hands to actually put that on, right? He's saying, yeah, hey, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. I'm just trying to simplify this for everyone so that you can understand what this movement is about. That's what Paul is saying. And he goes on and he says, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. How's the head going to get around if there, there aren't any feet, right? And then he goes and he says, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem, and I love this, that seem, that word they seem, because it has an appearance, he says, to be weaker or indispensable. Like they're so valuable. They're actually so crucial to the movement, to the body, that they actually play such a pivotal role to make sure that this can continue. Now, I don't know about you, but, but sometimes when we think of church, and I know this is where the church has got it wrong so many times, we think that, hey, we're not good enough to actually be part of this movement. We're not good enough. We, we've got so many, you know, so much sin in our lives, or, or we don't measure up to what we think God actually expects of us. But that was totally in opposite of what, what actually the movement was all about, because the movement always was initiated by God. It was started by Jesus, and it was what he had done, and he was saying, hey, all I want you to do is follow me. Just follow me step by step. Just be part of this community. And he says, hey, you are valuable. You may think you're not valuable. You may hear all those lies that echo in your head that say, hey, you, you're actually not good enough to be part of this community. But he says, hey, you are actually so indispensably valuable. Now today, I want to try and break this down even in another way that, that everyone can understand and get this. And we're passionate, like, with this move, move across the room. We say this guy is all about, um, you know, just initiating action, just not being just a building, yeah, but actually we want to do stuff. We actually want to go and make a difference in people's lives. We want to go and make a difference in our own families' lives, in, in the lives of strangers that we don't know, um, in this community, in Auckland, in New Zealand, and around the world. And um, I love that this church is also passionate about making a difference um, outside of New Zealand. And this year, in a couple of weeks or months' time, we've got a team that's going to be heading off to Cambodia and going to move across the world to actually go and serve. And I love that that's what this movement is about. Um, it's about us trying to partner with and actually come alongside people, trying to empower, trying to encourage, trying to support. And for those who don't know, and I know Karen, you didn't want me to share this, but Karen's been to Cambodia about 17 times um, to go and make a difference there. She has a passion for it. She leaves her comforts of New Zealand, yeah, and she's heading off there on the 1st of October, and she's going to be there until next year, is it March or April sometime, just to go form relationships, just to come alongside, just to come and try and make a difference. You see, that's what this church, this is what Paul is trying to communicate in this whole thing about movement. I want to end off with how he summarizes this text. And he says this, he says, But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. He says, hey, just a reminder that this is about God. This is about God empowering. This is about God giving himself his gifts. And he, shares, and he says, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. That like, hey, you, you care about any and everybody. If they're in this building, if they're outside of this building, if they don't believe everything you believe, you show care. You come alongside. You go and support. No matter what the differences are, that's what Paul's echoing. And I love this passage because 
the whole point of it that I thought about is, is this, that actually, if we go to the next slide, um, oh, sorry, he goes on, and this, this is just what we started off, he summarizes, he says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it, but this is what he says then, or, or this is the, the crux that I think of, it says that a body that does not move is either dead, paralyzed, or asleep, right? I mean, if, if you've come across a body just lying somewhere, all right, is either sleeping, either they're paralyzed in some way, or they're dead. And I would hate to see that this movement, this community, just becomes a dead building. And what Paul is saying here is saying, hey, this, this movement this thing about being a Jesus follower is all about the action. It's all about moving. It's all about coming close. It's all about seeing that this is about all of us coming together. It's about accepting one another. It's about seeing that each one has gifts and that, that each one can actually empower and encourage and love on anyone. So today, I want to challenge all of us. If we go to the next slide. Appreciate, I don't know, and, and this is, if, if you're here for the first time, this isn't for you, but, but if you've been around Gracegate for a while, um, in some way I'm sure you appreciate something that this community has done for you. Um, in some way you've experienced appreciation, and it could be maybe you've, you've received some counseling from this organization, you've, you've just received support with your kids, you've seen that, man, my kids are in this environment, and and they've just been enjoying this environment, and I'm so glad that, that this community is helping me parent. Uh, maybe it's just in the life group that you're in. You're just appreciative of the people around you who send you a gift, who send you a card, who just give you a call and say, hey, we're so grateful um, that you're in our life and who encourage you when you're going through difficult times. Uh, maybe it's just, you know, that this place is free coffee on a Saturday morning. Maybe it's that there's lunch afterwards, but, but in some way, surely, and I hope that in some way, if you yeah and you yeah again, surely you've experienced some appreciation of what this movement is doing. Maybe it's in the journey of recovery, and you've seen that, man, I didn't know that people would, would actually be there for me, like everyone else has just turned their back on me, but, but this, this community has just said, hey, we're, we're going to love on you. We're going to accept you as you are, and we, we're just going to help you and try to point you towards who Jesus is step by step. So if you have appreciated anything about this community, then today I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to actually now not just appreciate, but participate. That you would actually now say, hey, the whole passage that Paul's trying to echo here is trying to say that, hey, you don't have to measure up to any certain degree or performance to be a participant, but actually it requires your participation to make this community, to make this movement continue. And I want to challenge us that, hey, actually we can only get better. We can only do more things. We can only make a bigger difference in this community and the rest of the world if all of us are embracing and taking ownership and saying, hey, I want to be a participant. Hey, actually, you know, all, all I am is, is the little pinky toe on my foot, you know. And Paul's saying, well, that's needed. Actually, that is needed. Like that's just as essential as the head. That's just as essential as the hand. Like each and every one of us are needed to continue this movement, to continue to make a difference to continue to say, hey, God, empower us, and let's see how we can inspire and make a difference in this world. There's a story um, that I want to end off with, and it echoes our, our just move across the, the room guy. And the whole thing about move across the room, we've got it at all our doors, our exit signs. You see it at any exit sign in a restaurant or anywhere. And, and we love this logo because... It's a logo of action. It's a logo that, hey, when we leave this building, we're just reminded that this is about a movement. This isn't about just coming here on a Saturday morning, but it's actually so much more than that. 
It's about us being an influence in our community, being an influence in our office, being an influence in, in our work environment, being an influence in our university, being an influence in, in our um, family life, being an influence to the stranger that we walk past, and just coming close to being in proximity. And I love Karen actually coming up here because I know it was one of the most uncomfortable things for her to do today. And I know that because we chatted about it and we've, she's been trying to cancel it over and over and over again. <laughs> but I loved it because this is the thing about Move Across the Room is that it encourages us that actually we have to step outside of our comfort zone to come in proximity with people who actually may not look like us or actually believe like us. But that's the whole mission of the movement is to come along people who who aren't like us, and to actually say, hey, we care. We care about you. How are you? And I mean, we know how fragile this country is and life is in this country. Like, we need to do this more. And for us, I love it because it's like actually move across the room. I'm going to come outside of my comfort zone. I'm going to move to someone, and I'm just going to befriend with no strings attached. Hey, I'm just going to come and help you. I'm going to listen to you and actually listen to you and see, hey, if there's a need, I'm going to do whatever I possibly can to help you. And that's what this community is about. This community is about each and every one of us taking ownership. I want to end with this story. Love this story. Um, Just got to find it on my phone. I'm going to read it to you. It's from a book entitled Life-Giving Leaders. Um, But it's a story, if you've watched Hacksaw Ridge, gruesome movie, a lot of blood. Um, But if you want to hear about an encouraging, inspiring person, it's this guy I'm going to read about. It's Desmond Doss. And um, for those who don't know the story, I want to read to you what what this author writes about Desmond Doss. He says, Doss grew up in Lynchburg, Virginia. He had a turbulent upbringing and an alcoholic father. Yet his mother was a strong woman of God. The scriptural grounding that his mother gave him would be the backbone of his life story. The craziest part of his role in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945 was that Doss never fired a weapon. It was one of the war's bloodiest battles with casualties projected at more than 160,000. I'll say that again, more than 160,000 Japanese and American troops. The Allies wanted to secure the island as a base of operations, but the Japanese used every measure, including civilians dressed as soldiers, to defend it. Hacksaw Ridge presented some of the most difficult terrain for an invading force to cover. Love this part. And that's where Doss became the war hero who never fired a round. He was surrendered fully to the idea that while everybody else is taking life, I'm going to be saving it. While everybody else is taking life, I'm going to be saving it. Doss became a target for ridicule when he first enlisted But however, he he stayed true to his convictions and his desire to serve. It was his faith in God that compelled him to lay down his life for those around him. He called himself a conscientious cooperator. He said he chose to go to war because he was eager to wear the uniform, salute the American flag, and give everything he had to serve his country. But he made the choice, he made the choice, he made the choice, he made the choice to serve. And in doing so, he rescued some 75 Allied soldiers while under heavy fire. He made the choice that, hey, amongst all this chaos, amongst all this war, I'm choosing to serve And I'm going to go, even when it's difficult, even when my life depends on it, to go and rescue. He saved 75 people. 
It concludes like this, and he writes, he says, Doss never lacked courage. In his heroic rescue operation, he created special knots to use in lowering men from the high ground that was being bombarded. He was able to get them down to where they received medical help, all the while avoiding the enemy. And if you've watched the movie or if, you, or if you've heard about the story before, he's like, who would have thought that some stupid knots that he was just creating as a young kid would actually be the significant part of the body that would rescue 75 people? Love this story. And it says then, what an incredible story of embracing a call to serve. He was the first conscientious objector to win the Congressional Medal of Honor awarded him by President Harry S. Truman on October 12, 1945. Desmond Doss was so driven. Desmond Doss was so driven to serve that he worked out a way to enter battle as a Christian who was convinced that God opposes war. Men returned home alive after the war because Doss risked his life time and time again to pull them off the battlefield to safety. I love this story because this echoes. Nowadays, we might think, hey, we're, we're not in World War II, but I don't know if you've come in proximity with some people, I know there's wars that are raging. There's wars that are raging. People are under stress. People are finding it hard to do anything in life. People are finding challenges, relationship challenges, drug challenges, so many different challenges in life. And, and we, as a movement, as a church, as a community, we need to choose and say, hey, actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come close. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. But hey, I'll come close and I'll see how I can support, how I can help. Today, I want to invite you to actually make this choice for yourself. Because today, as I've been speaking, I hope that in some way, shape or form, that there are some people that are coming to your mind that you know, hey, actually, you're in proximity with them. And you can make a difference in their life. And I want to challenge us today as, as we sort of end this section of the program to actually think about those people. And, I, and we're going to keep playing this song. And, and I want you to actually get out of your seat, come to the front here. And we've got all these tags here. It says, I choose to move. I want you to actually grab one. And I want you to go sit down. And there's all pens on the side of the the seats, just pass them all down. I want you to just sit and in a space of just a few minutes, just think about, hey, who are some people that, that I can reach out to? Who are some people that I can move towards and say, hey, I'm here to care for you. Uh, I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but how are you? I'm here. Just here to support. And you don't even have to believe in Jesus to actually do this. It's something that's so cool about the movement. So can we do that? Can, you, can we keep playing this? And can you come up front? Can you grab one of these and just spend a few minutes in silence and just thinking, hey, whose names can I maybe jot down on this thing? And who can I go and encourage? Now, the cool thing about this is that, that we have a, a superpower. We have a divine power. We have a, a savior who actually says he's going to help us do this. So jot down those names, and if you can't think of a name now, then that's okay, but take it home. Maybe as you go throughout your week and you just listen, you say, hey, actually, I can be a part of this body. I, I can be a part of this movement that, that can make a difference. Um, I just want to say, man, it's a, it's a real honor and it's a real blessing to call you one of my great friends. Uh, we've been through a lot. I've seen you grown um, just in the time that I've known you. And it's been massive, bro. I think the thing that takes my breath away, genuinely, is your relationship with God. And the way that you're so willing to accept a, a challenge and to be challenged by Him and to grow 
um, through whatever comes your way. And, and the fact that you actually lean on him so amazingly. It's inspiring, bro. And, and truly, it inspires me. So I'm really excited that you're taking this step um, in what you're going to do. And it's very, it's very awesome, bro. And you've got a whole community and family that's supporting you. Look at all these people that are turned up, man. These are people that you've inspired and, and walked alongside with and journey alongside with, bro. Take it in, right? This is amazing, right? You're making such a massive difference in the community, bro. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Nate, um, I remember one of your mates at your 21st um, birthday. He got up and he shared a speech. And in that speech, he said, oh, Nathan's going to change Auckland. He's going to actually change Auckland. And I don't think he had the, the reference that we have and the way we've seen you um, been changing this community, um, the, the way you lead with love and the connections that you've been forming with some of the guys in high school and making a difference in their lives and the young adults in this community. And bro, I'm excited about your future and where God is leading to you. And um, baptism is just a defining moment of what has happened before, and but most importantly about what's happening after and what God's going to do through your life um, in this next season of life. So it's my privilege today to have you in this pool. And um, today I'm baptizing you because you've chosen to follow Jesus wholeheartedly and you're going public about your faith. And today I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, the, the greater the struggle, the greater the story. And, man, I love being in this pool, yeah, and just, you know, when you know what people have navigated through and their choice to make a public declaration of their faith. And I don't know where you're at today. Maybe you're at that space where actually, hey, you're considering faith in Jesus or taking your next step in faith. And um, we'd love to, you know, help and come alongside you if that's, that's your choice and if you just have more questions about faith we'd love to come alongside you and also help you on your journey